today Sylvie and I are back in the county of Cambridgeshire and we're starting our walk in the village of Burwell which is situated some 12 miles to the east of Cambridge. We're setting off at the southern end of the village which is where the church is situated and it's the church that has an item of interest that I wanted to show Sylvie. The item of interest isn't actually inside the church, rather it's in the churchyard. This headstone tells of a terrible tragedy that occurred in the village nearly 300 years ago. Yeah, what happened here was um, September 1727 there was over a hundred people who attended a puppet show in a barn um, somewhere in Burwell and they locked the doors so that more people couldn't come in um, and unfortunately a fire started and 78 people burnt to death in the barn so um, yeah it was quite tragic After our visit to the church, we set off on a walk up through the village high street. Burwell is quite a large village, almost two miles long, and it has a mix of old style buildings as well as modern. As we approach the northern end of the village, we come to the Anchor Pub. We're turning left by the pub into Anchor Lane, which should bring us onto a path out of the village and then into the countryside. The footpath runs beside a canal 
This canal is known as a load, spelt L-O-D-E. There are many loads in the Fenland area and are believed to have been originally dug by the Romans nearly 2,000 years ago. Many of them are still navigable. This particular load runs for approximately four miles, although we're only going to a crossing place approximately two miles further up. After we'd walked about a mile along the load, we looked across in the distance and saw something extraordinary, a working windmill. Fortunately, this windmill is situated in the village we're heading to. After two and a quarter miles, we reached the crossing place, which consists of two bridges, one for farm vehicles and the other is a footbridge. We now leave the load and head west towards the village of Wiccan, which is just over a mile away. As we get closer to the village, we come to an area known as Wiccan Fen, which is now a large nature reserve. Once we're through the fen, we get a magnificent view of the last remaining 12-sided working smock mill in the country. And I can't wait to get there. It's always been my dream to go inside a working windmill. The windmill is open to the public on certain days of the month and the entrance is free.
Right, well, every uh, floor is different on the windmill. Uh, they all have a different purpose apart from the main purpose of holding the sails up, which is the uh, <laughs> <laughs> central purpose of the building, I think. But um, you're welcome to clamber up if you have a. Right, after you, Sil. <laughs> after you, Sil. Okay. Follow <laughs> me. Wicked windmill whole wheel flower. Wow. We like to make a very fine flower here. Yeah. And uh, so that's what's in all these uh, sacks. And uh, we turn about half of the flower into white flour, which is, to do that you have to sieve out the brown, the oh, shallow, that's yeah. the brown bit. Yeah. And uh, in a way it's fortunate that the kernel of the wheat seed is white, because that's how we get nice pure white flour, <laughs> but if it was red or green, mm. we'd be <laughs> a red flour. Or green. Yeah. <laughs> but we have white flour. So you can just see the underside of the stone. In the yeah. There's another one on the other side of the to the outside and there's a pulley on the outside of the window which you have a big belt and uh, drive all the internal works. Um, but it, the mill went downhill. Nobody ever tried to demolish it or it was protected to an extent but uh, no repairs were done. So um, in 1980s I guess, memories are hazy, I was there though, <laughs> um, sitting in the pub one night we thought what a pity the windmill's falling to pieces why don't we do something about it? So, uh, so we you did, did. But we've been here ever since. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we you all should... had proper jobs at that yeah. time, and uh, you, know, you could work on it so. a weekend or two every month, but not more than that. Wow. So it took a while to, uh, to it up. And we were finding our way, as you can imagine. Mm. I know it's. You tend to catch the back of your napper on the. Uh, on the beam, the side. I think the old miller was a bit short. <laughs> After a lifetime of carrying heavy sacks, I think he was. <laughs> cool. <sighs> Two sets of millstones, which is what the windmill was built with. And we keep. Uh, that's set over there for, for wheat, flour, and this side for everything else, so spelt, rye, and all, and we get occasional specials from local farmers and so on, they've got two or three sacks, experimental wheat they want to be ground, so that goes through here. And uh, there used to be a, another set of stones here, but there's a, a circular bit of flooring, but uh, that was obviously an afterthought and was, there's not going to be much room up here if we put those back, mm. because the problem occurs when you do dress the stones, because you have to take up the top stone each, so there's a pair of stones here, the top yeah. one goes round, and you that should, weighs are getting on for a ton, and uh, you have to lift that up vertically on edge and then drop it back in a considered way onto the floor here so you can work cool. on it. So there you then take it up an awful lot of the floor. Yeah. And uh, in the high class mills uh, stones would be taken up every week for uh, titivation but uh, six months is good enough. What are the, <laughs> what are the stones made of? Well, what you can see here is cheating, really, because that's plaster of Paris on the top. Oh, that's a fake stone. Then. It's a fake stone. <laughs> <laughs> but underneath, the, the plaster of Paris is, is to uh, make the top of the stone look nice. 
a bit like a giant iced cake or something like that. <laughs> because underneath it's made of small lumps of very hard stone. Yeah. Uh, cemented to get shaped and like a jigsaw and cemented together. And they are all of different heights, so you want to have a, a smooth top surface, and that's where the plaster back has them. Yeah. But we did inquire what the uh, stone was, because uh, the old millers always used to say, well, it's French burstone. And what's burstone? Goodness knows. I did have a piece over here somewhere. It's been tidied up. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, top part of the windmill turns to face the wind. As it uh, yeah. moves around. Wow. So the, uh, the cap has turned to about 90 degrees with the sails since I've been here this morning. Wow. Well, that visit to the windmill certainly made my day. That's one off my bucket list. Now it's across the road to the village pub for a drink. After our drink, we take a walk around the village, which, incidentally, was struck by a tornado back in November 1981. We're first heading to the eastern edge of the village where the church is situated, but on the way we stop to admire a local spectacle, a model village which someone has built in their front garden. We eventually reach the Church of St. Lawrence, which originates from the 13th century. This church also has an interesting feature that I wanted to look at. On this occasion, the feature is actually inside the church, somewhere up near the altar. Down beside the altar is the tombstone of a man called Henry Cromwell, who was the fourth son of Oliver Cromwell and Lord Protector of Ireland during his father's rule in the 1650s, and he died in 1687. Well, we're now setting off back into the village. But after our walk round the village, we noticed that time was pressing on. It was now around 5pm. Sylvie and I decided to stop back at the village pub for an evening meal before we set off back to Burwell. We had hoped to include a third village on this walk, but being early April, the daylight hours still aren't long enough, and we still have a four mile walk ahead of us.
we eventually made it back to Burwell just as the sun was setting. The walk's taken us almost six hours, but we're planning to return here over the coming months as there are many more villages to visit and things to see around here. But we hope you enjoyed the walk.